special for you this morning. In front of you, meron po kayong makikitang pockets. At kanina po, naglagay po ako ng reward dyan. So at the count of three, I want you all to get that reward. Tignan nyo kung kayo po ay isa sa mabibigyan po ng reward. Alright, in three, two, one, go! Alright, alright. Okay na po. Biro lang po yun. <laughs> Nagising na po ba ang lahat? Hallelujah! Palakpakan naman natin ang Lord. Hallelujah! Praise God. Thank you for participating in that icebreaker. Pero alam niyo po ang lesson po doon, karamihan sa atin bilang mga tao po, no, ako rin po kasama po doon. Bakit ang daling sumunod kapag ka may reward? Or ang daling sumunod kapag madali ang paraan para makuha yung reward, no? Why is it so easy for people to obey when there is an instant or immediate Reward. Good morning, everyone, and welcome again to our church, JIL City of San Fernando, Pampanga. Hello po sa lahat ng nanonood via our Facebook live stream. Again, maraming salamat po sa atin pong mga ginagalang na pastor at leaders, Pastor Alex, Madam Lillian, for giving us NGYC's Next Generation Young Champions an opportunity to serve you po dito po sa ating panambahan. Hallelujah! Are you glad that you are here in church? Amen and amen. Alam ko po, kanina nyo pa po nararamdaman, nararanasan ng presensya po ng atin pong Panginoon. As I was saying a while ago, it is naturally easy for a man to obey when he knows that there is an immediate or instant reward waiting for him. Example, magulang at anak. Sasabihin ng magulang, anak, tapusin mo yung assignment mo. Pag natapos mo yan agad, pupunta tayo ng Jollibee. At ang gagawin ng anak, syempre tatapusin niya yun agad para makuha yung reward na sinabi ng kanyang magulang. Boss at empleyado, sasabihin ng bossing, Okay team, mag-o-overtime kayo this week para mahit natin ang ating sales. Pag nahit natin ang ating kota, may bonus kayo sa akin. No? So ang daling sumunod, teacher at student, sasabihin ng teacher, Okay class, plus points sa lahat ng sasama sa sabayang pagbigkas. Siyempre, lahat ng sudyante, gustong-gusto yan, plus points. Madaling sumunod kapag ka, meron po tayong reward. It's easy to obey when we know you will reap a sure reward. Ang katanungan lang mo naman dito is, ano bang makuha ko pag ginawa ko yan? ba? Diba? But, why is it for some Christians, again, for some Christians, it's hard to live a life of obedience to God. So here are some examples. It's hard to read the Bible consistently. Sabi nila, mahirap basahin ng Bible every day. Mahirap yung wala kang mintis, wala kang absence sa personal devotion mo. It's hard to pray without worrying. Mahirap ang hindi mag-worry kapag ka patong-patong na ang mga problema, mga bills, andyan si Bill, andyan si Judith. Mahirap ang hindi mag-worry. It's hard to forgive people who wronged us, spread false accusations about us. Fake news about us and betrayed us. Ang hirap magpatawad sa mga taong sinaktan ka, pinagchismisan ka, tinraidor ka. It's hard to give our tithes and offerings faithfully. Mahirap ibigay ang ating mga kaloob na dapat sa Diyos. Minsan nagagamit, sana'y hindi, nagagamit minsan sa bayarin, no? At uh, nagagamit ang tithes sa mga bills, <laughs> At hindi tinatabi ang mga first fruits or 10% ng atin pong mga income. It's hard to put God first early in the morning when you wake up. Naku, marami. Lord, pasensya na Lord. Malilate po ako. Marami pa po kasi akong gagawin. Mamaya na lang po magbabasa ng Bible. It's hard to help others who are in need. Mahirap tumulong sa iba. Lalo na kung 
Tapos ka rin. Nakulang na kulang pa ang meron ka. It's hard to obey our parents, mga kabataan. Mahirap sumunod sa magulang, lalo na kung taliwas ito sa gusto ng mga anak. It's hard to maintain holiness and purity, lalo na sa mundong ating ginagalawan na puno ng karumihan. Andiyan ang bisyo, ang droga. Andiyan ang pornography. At iba-iba pa pong mga bagay na hindi nakapagpalugod sa ating Panginoon. Nakikita sa social media, nakikita sa labas, no? nakikita sa ating community. It's hard to discipline your children. Para naman po sa mga magulang na nandito, ang hirap-hirap disiplinahin ng aking anak. Lalo na kung matigas ang kanyang ulo at ayaw sumunod sa akin. Alam naman po nating may sure reward kapag po may obedience. Pero bakit kaya minsan ang hirap pong sumunod? Sa ating pagbuhay bilang kristyano, minsan parang roller coaster po. Minsan, o-obey. Minsan, hindi. Minsan, o-obey. Minsan, hindi. But my prayer is that all of us ay matuto po tayo mag-obey consistently. Sabihin nga po natin, consistently. Praise God. Minsan, yung iba sa atin, pili ang kanilang mga sinusunod na utos ng Panginoon. Lord, hindi ko muna siya papatawarin. Pwede pang wag ko muna siyang patawarin kasi masyadong malaki yung ginawa niya sa akin. Lord, pwede pang mamaya na ako mag-devotion kasi may lakad pa po ako. Lord, titikman ko lang naman ng konti yung alak, di naman po ko maglalasing. Bakit merong choice, no? O kaya, meron tayong pinipili lang na mga gusto natin obey, meron din tayong mga pinipili na ah, Lord, baka pwede namang pahintulutan mo muna. Madalas po natin itong naririnig sa ating mga, mga preachers. Partial obedience is still disobedience. Obedience daw po is deeply rooted in our relationship with God. So when we say, I love you, Lord, Without taking action, ang tawag po doon parang sweet talk lang, no? The Bible clearly tells us that the proof that we really love God ay mababasa natin sa ilang mga talatang gusto ko pong i-share sa bawat isa po sa atin. Alright, so first, we have John chapter 14, verse 23, and it says there, Jesus replied, anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. My Father will love them and will come to them and make our home with them. And in 1 John 5 verse 3, sabi po doon, we show our love for God by obeying His commandments and they are not hard to follow. And last but not the least, and this will be our key verse, John chapter 14 verse 15. And I want you all to join me in uh, reading this, alright? Sabay-sabay po tayo. If you love me, obey my commandments. At the end of this preaching, my prayer is that memorize nyo na rin po yung verse na yan. Alright? Again, John 14, 15. If you love me, obey my commandments. Plain and simple. Ganyan po ang salita ng ating pong Panginoon. Amen? With the topic, to love is to obey. Obedience to God is a proof of our love for Him, taken from John 14 verse 15, my prayer today is that we will learn how to become obedient to God as our expression of love to Him. Amen? Ready na po ba kayo? Amen! Praise God! Alam niyo po, sa Maynila, Maynila ay isa sa mga pinakamatraffic na lugar sa Pilipinas. Do you agree with me? Amen? Marami mga dumadaan ng mga trucks, iba-ibang mga sasakyan. Tapos ang dami pang sumisigit na mga moto, na mga makukulit, no? Ang dami-dami pong mga dumadaan na nasa sasakyan dyan. At marahil nakakita na po kayo ng malaking karatula na nagsasabing, bawal tumawid. Okay? Baka may nakita na po kayo, no? And then, after a while, bigla na lang after mga ilang gilinggo, ganito na ang naging karatula. Anong sabi dyan? Bawal tumawid! May namatay na dito. Okay, parang na-advance siya, no? <laughs> Ulitin natin. So, pangalawa, ang sabi doon, bawal tumawid, nakamamatay. Ayan, yun yung sabi niya, no? Bakit? Siguro ang kukulit, ang kukulit, may tumatawid pa din. Dinagdagan yung bawal tumawid ng nakamamatay. After a while, 
after ilang linggo, ganito na po ang naging sign o malaking karatula. Bawal tumawid, may namatay na dito. O ba diba? talaga? Ang kukulit po kasi no, minsan yung mga Pilipino ang kukulit talaga. Dumatawid pa din. Alam niyo po, ito po ay mga mababala na nakikita natin sa ating pong kapaligiran. Ang mga babala daw po ay isang paraan para magkaroon ng disiplina ang tao. Makaiwas sa disgrasya at mailayo tayo sa tiyak na kapahamakan. Ngunit marami ang hindi sumusunod o marami ang nag-aakala na kahit hindi nila sundin na mga paalala at babalang ito ay walang mangyayari sa kanilang masama. Sabi nga nila na sa ha, huli ang pagsisisi, di ba? Kaya makikita natin sa mga news. Makikita mo may mga naaksidente. Bakit? Dahil hindi sumunod sa babala. And you know what? Meron po tayong babala na makikita rin po sa atin pong mga Biblia. Ito po ang mga babala sa atin ng ating Panginoon. Bakit? Dahil ayaw po niyang mapahamak ang bawat isa po sa atin. I want to give you one verse, Proverbs 3, verse 1 to 2, sabi niya, My son or my daughter, do not forget my teaching, but let your heart keep my commandments for length of days and years of life and peace they will add to you. Who wants length of days and years of life? Tasa kamay! Hallelujah! Who wants peace? Sino pong gusto ng kapayapaan sa buhay? Amen! All you have to do is to keep God's commandments in your heart. All you have to do is to obey His commandments. There is this one preacher by the name of Dr. Charles Stanley. Baka nakita nyo na po siya sa YouTube or Facebook. Napakagaling din po niya preacher. Sabi niya, obeying God is not always easy. But it is always the wisest and best thing to do. At mamaya po ipapaliwanag natin, bakit ito ay wisest and best thing to do? You know, from the scriptures, from the book of Genesis to Revelation, God is constantly reminding us about the importance of obedience. Over and over again, God promises that He will bless us if we obey Him. Parang kambal po yan. Obedience equals blessing. Here are some of the promises po that I want to share with you to attest what I said a while ago that obedience equals blessing. I want to share with you Deuteronomy 28, 1-2. Now it shall be if you diligently obey the Lord your God, being careful to do all the commandments which I am commanding you today, that the Lord your God will put you high above all the nations of the earth. And all these blessings will come to you and reach you if you obey the Lord your God. Another po, Isaiah chapter 1 verse 18 to 20. Though your sins are like scarlet, though they, though they are red like crimson, they shall be as wool. If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. But if you refuse... And rebel, you shall be devoured by the sword, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. And last, Jeremiah chapter 7, verse 23. But this is what I commanded them, saying, Obey my voice, and I will be your God, and you shall be my people. And walk in all the ways that I have commanded you, that it may be well with you. It is absolutely impossible to obey without blessing because God has chosen to bless obedience. And when we, as His children, choose to walk in His ways and will, we will be blessed over and over and over and over again. Amen? Palakpakan naman po natin ang Lord. Hallelujah! Who wants blessing from the Lord? Obey Him with all our hearts. Hallelujah! And I know that obeying Him, tulad ng nasabi po natin, is sometimes hard. Wala pong perfect sa atin. Amen po? Minsan, dumadoplis din po tayo. Minsan, nakaka-disobey din po tayo. Because all of us are imperfect. 
But throughout this preaching, I want to tell you of the grace that God is showing us. The grace that He is giving each of us. That you can start where you are right now. Start obeying Him again. Start drawing to God again. Start to build your relationship again. Amen po? So I want to share with you again just a recap of what the definition of obedience is. So here are some definitions na akin pong nakuha from our previous preachings na narinig this month of March. Number one, obedience is hearing the Word of God and acting on it. Hindi pala, hindi pala uh, sapat na nakikinig ka ng Sunday preaching. That's okay na. Hindi pala ganoon. Kailangan makinig ka, magbasa ka ng Word of God and you have to apply it. You have to obey what is written in the Word of God. Number two, obedience is aligning our will with God's will, surrendering our desires and plans to His divine authority. Naku! Minsan, ang hirap gawin nito. Minsan, may gusto tayong gawin, pero, oh no, hindi pala siya will ng Panginoon. Anong gagawin natin? Do we obey our own will or do we obey God's will? Amen? Obedience is heeding God's commands, trusting in His wisdom and guidance even when it goes against our own understanding. Bakit? Kahit hindi natin naiintindihan ng mga nararanasan natin. Ang sabi ng Lord, My thoughts are higher than your thoughts and my ways higher than your ways. That is our God. Amen po ba? And He knows what is best for you. Sabi niyo po sa inyo katabi, God knows what's best for you. Hallelujah. And last definition of obedience which is connected to our preaching for today is obedience is an expression of our love for God. It is a tangible way to demonstrate po ang ating pasasalamat sa Kanya pong kahabagan sa bawat isa po sa atin. Through obedience, we honor God and acknowledge His Lordship over every area or every aspect of our lives. It is through obedience that we find true freedom, true joy, and fulfillment in Christ. Sa una, mahirap mag-obey. Pero kapag pinagpatuloy po natin, makikita natin gumagaan. Amen? Because ang rewards ng ating Panginoon ay evident. Amen? When you obey God, there are decisions you wrestle that you won't have to wrestle now. You just know that this is the way of the Lord, this is the will and the purpose of God. And it is through obedience that we align ourselves with God's will and experience the abundant life that He promised. Again, do you want to have an abundant life po? Amen. All you have to do is really simple. Obey. Obey God and His words. Hallelujah. Now, throughout the Bible, we see numerous examples po ng mga taong nag-obey sa Panginoon. At alam kong kilalang kilala niyo po sila. As you can see from the picture, the first is Noah. Noah obediently built the ark that God has commanded him even though it seemed absurd. Gumawa siya ng arko doon sa bundok. At syempre, yung mga tao pinagtatawanan po siya. Bakit mo ginagawa yan? Are you crazy? Pero, pero ang ginawa ni Noah, he obediently um, uh, followed what the Lord said, di ba? Next po, si Abraham. Abraham. He willingly obeyed God's call to leave his homeland and journey to an unknown land. Kasi sabi ng Panginoon. And then Moses, despite his initial reluctance, he ultimately obeyed God. Moses know na hindi po siya perfect, hindi siya equipped, but then he said yes to the Lord. He followed the Lord to lead the Israelites out of Egypt. These stories illustrate that obedience is not always easy. It often requires sacrifice po, stepping out of our comfort zones and trusting in God's faithfulness. Yet, the rewards of obedience are immeasurable. Sabihin po natin, immeasurable. Hindi mabilang. When we choose to obey, we open ourselves up 
to the blessings and favor of God. We experience His provision, His protection, and His guidance in our lives and in our family. Again, Dr. Charles Stanley said, obedience is doing God's will, God's way, in God's timing. No, It is doing what God says, when He says to do it, and how He says to do it. Now, I want to share with you four points lang po. No, how we can learn to be obedient. How can we be obedient to God? Again, tulad na nasabi ko po kanina sa inyo, all of us are imperfect. But you can start where you are right now. So, eto po mga sinasabi namin tuwing preachings, these are all reminders. Alam na po natin lahat ng to. But we have to remind each and every one of us of God's word. Amen po ba? So first point, how can I be obedient to God? First is learn to trust Him. Sabihin po natin, trust. Sa Tagalog, tiwala. Matuto tayo magtiwala sa ating Panginoon. Because you will not obey a God you do not trust. Amen? Most disobedience of men results from lack of trust in God. Proverbs 3, verse 5 to 6, it clearly states that trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to Him and He will make your paths straight. Praise God. Napakasimple, napakadaling intindihin. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, you acknowledge that He is Lord over your life. And surely, He will make your path straight. He will set all things together for good. He will place everything in its rightful places. Aayusin lahat ng Panginoon if we fully trust Him with all of our hearts. So I want, if I want to live a life of obedience, if we want to live a life of obedience, we have to settle first the issue of who is God in my life. Amen po ba? There is this quote from Pastor Henry Blackaby, a Canadian evangelical pastor. Ang sabi po niya, God's commands are designed to guide you to life's very best. You will not obey Him if you do not believe Him and trust Him. You cannot believe Him if you do not love Him. You cannot love Him unless you know Him. So who is God in my life? And I believe you will agree with me that God is sovereign. Amen po. He created all things and all things are possible with Him. He is all powerful and He, he knows all things. He is trustworthy. Mapagkakatiwalaan po ang ating Panginoon. He keeps His promises. You know, there are thousands of promises in the Bible at ni isa walang mintis ang Panginoon. Kailanman hindi niya po tayo pinabayaan. Amen po? He is always the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And He is faithful. Praise God. This is our God. Kaya walang duda. Hindi tayo dapat magduda sa Diyos na ating pinaglilingkuran. Because He is all powerful. He is all things. Lahat ay kaya niyang gawin. Now, how do I learn to trust God? And this is the answer. Do what God tells you to do and see the results. So, kanina tinanong ko din po sa first service. All you have to do is to Pinpoint a person here in the church, okay? Someone na he is he or she is living a life of obedience, and then see the results of his or her life, no? And then another, tingin ka naman sa isang tao na he or she is living a life of disobedience, and then see the results of his or her life. Anong common denominator? When you are living in obedience, for sure there is prosperity, there is health. Diba? Meron pong magandang pamilya, maayos na relasyon. But here, sa so may disobedience, possibly, ang kanyang buhay ay puno ng utang, um, may mga bisyo, amen? So, hindi maganda ang pamilya, yon ang kanilang common denominator. 
And um, a lot of waiting, mga kapatid. Sabi dito, requires trusting. Sabihin po natin, trusting. In Psalm 27 verse 14, sabi doon, Wait for the Lord, be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. Maybe we have prayers, long-standing prayers na pinapanalangin sa ating Panginoon. And nandun na tayo sa peak na parang gusto na natin gumive up. I want to tell you, everyone, that when you pray, God is working. Even when we don't feel it, even when we don't see it, God is working. Amen po ba? Amen. Hallelujah. When you don't know what to do and when to do it, wait for the Lord and trust in Him. So, po example dito, uh, nung minsan tumawag sa akin yung kapatid ko, and then he is asking for my advice kung anong gagawin niya sa isang crucial decision na kanyang buhay. Ang sabi ko lang sa kanya is to pause, to pray, to read God's word, and tignan mo ano ang salita ng Panginoon para sa'yo. If there is peace dito sa prayer mo, then go for it. That is God's will for you. Minsan sa buhay natin, kailangan talaga nating huminto muna, hintayin ang sagot ng ating Panginoon. Madalas po kasi, some of the Christians are nagmamadali, sabi nga nila. They have the fear of missing out. Yung masyado na akong matanda. Kailangan ko nang gawin to, matanda na ako. Pero hindi nila napapansin o namamalayan na hindi pala yon ang plano ng Panginoon para sa kanilang mga buhay. Example, sa mga singles. Hello sa mga singles po dyan. Ako rin, single. <laughs> okay. Sa mga naghihintay na kanilang God's best, huwag po kayong magmamadali. Okay? Baka mapunta po kayo sa maling tao. Amen? So, stay faithful to the Lord. Wait upon the Lord. Wait upon His response. Sa mga singles po dito, all we have to do is to thrive in our season. Amen po ba? Patuloy po nating ipagamit ang ating buhay sa season of pagiging single. Amen po? Amen and amen. Praise God. So another po ko, another quote naman po na gusto ko po i-share sa inyo is from Reverend Alexander Garcia. Sabi po niya, Our trust in the Lord should be translated into obedience to His commands. If we say we trust the Lord but we don't obey His commands, our trust is just a lip service. Lip service lang daw po, no? Praise God. So, now that we have learned to trust the Lord, of course, kailangan natin kilalanin kung sino ba talaga siya at anong magagawa niya sa buhay natin. Kailangan natin malaman ano ang kanya mga promises, ano ang kanya mga warnings. That's why in point number two, we have learn to meditate upon God's Word. Praise God. If I want to know the mind of God, the will of God, the ways of God, where do I find it? In the scriptures, in the Bible. So if I want to know what to do in this given situation, I will start reading the Bible and ask God to speak to my heart. Amen? God is hindi madamot. Konyo po, no? God is committed to showing us His will. Hindi po maramot ang Panginoon. Meditating is reading God's Word and asking Him to show you His will and help you overcome your situation. Praise God. You know, it was my first time to do mountain hiking in Rizal last year. Masaya po pala ang magbundok, ano? And then, um, yung pagpunta namin sa bundok doon, 4 a.m., naglalakad na kami, nag-hike na kami. Eh, pag 4 a.m., madilim pa po, di ba? Ang meron lang po namin doon, flashlight, para yun po ang light namin sa aming path. But imagine kung wala po kaming flashlight, ano kaya ang pwedeng mangyari? Dito po sa kanan, meron pong bangin, no? Tapos ang dami mga bato, pwede kang madapa. At syempre, kung walang flashlight, pitch black, sobrang dilim. Di mo alam kung, kung saan ka pupunta. And meron po akong lesson na nakuha po doon. Good news, dahil tayo po bilang mga Kristiyano, dito sa mundong ating ginagalawan na puno ng kadiliman, we don't have to walk in darkness. Why? 
because we have the Bible, the Word of God. It is our compass and a light to illuminate our path. Praise God for the Bible. Sabi ng Psalm 119.105, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. All you have to do is to open your Bible, read the word of God. Nandun po lahat ng instructions ng ating Panginoon. Amen po ba? Palakpakan naman po natin ang Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And another thing, when we read the Bible, of course, we are discerning or sensitive to the promptings of the Holy Spirit. Learn to listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit, our helper, because He will guide us and direct us in the way we should go and how we should live our lives pleasing God. Amen po? John 14 verse 26 says, But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Ang Greek word daw po ng Holy Spirit ay parakletos. Nang ibig sabihin po, one who is called to one side, especially to help. The Holy Spirit is here to help us. It also means an intercessor, an assistant, or one who pleads the cause of another before a judge. Parang mediator po. Now, the role of the Holy Spirit is really all-encompassing. He is our comforter, counselor, helper, advocate, intercessor, strengthener, and standby. So what a joy! That we are not alone in this life. We have the Holy Spirit to guide us, to teach us what to do. Amen po ba? And surely, our victory is secure in the Lord. Actually, here in this life, now that uh, we have known the Lord, we know that He is good and faithful, forget the other reward. You know, just to know in your heart that you have done God's will, you have gained God's approval for simply obeying God, I think that's more than enough. Amen? Bonus na lang po yung mga natatanggap natin dito sa mundo. Yung makuha mo lang yung matamis ng ngiti ng Panginoon because you obeyed, ang sarap-sarap na po sa puso nun. Amen? Whatever God has in mind for you, this is a whole lot better than you think. Alam ko po, lahat tayo, meron pong kanya-kanya mga testimony. And I know you will attest that God has outdone your expectations. Amen po ba? May mga panalangin po kayo, mas higit hinigitan pa ng Panginoon. Well, that is how good and faithful and generous our God is. So, all we have to do is to wait. Wait lang, anak. Meron akong great plan para sa'yo. Huwag kang magmamadali. Obey. Trust in me. Amen po ba? Palakpakan naman po natin ng Lord. Praise God. Now, in response to knowing who God is sa ating mga buhay, in response to this, we go to point number three. Learn to worship and pray. Amen? To love God is to worship and praise Him. It is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve Him only. That is found in Luke chapter 4, verse 8. And in John 4, 23, Yet a time is coming and has now come when the true worshipers will worship the Father in the Spirit and truth, for they are the kind of worshipers the Father six. Sino po dito yung kapag ka, siya po ay maraming alalahanin, mga bit-bit na problema sa kanila mga buhay, when they worship natatanggal yon, napapawi yon. Mga mga may dalahin po tayo, hindi po ba gumagaan ng ating pakiramdam when we worship? So this morning, allow the Holy Spirit to touch each and every one of us. When we stand amazed of the beauty of God, Amen? All we can say is, Lord, I stand, I stand in awe of you. I stand, I stand in awe of you. Holy God, holy God, to whom all praise is due. 
I stand in awe of you. Thank you, Lord. And then when we know the purpose why we live here on earth, the purpose why you were created, isa lang po ang masasabi natin. But Lord, we worship you and the reason that we live is to worship you, God. Amen po. Pwede po ba nating taas ang ating mga kamay as we sing the songs to the Lord. Lord, I stand, I stand in awe of you. Lord, I stand, Lord, I stand, I stand in awe of you, holy God. Holy God, to whom all praise is due, I stand in awe of you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Just feel the presence of the Lord moving in this place. Lord, we stand in awe of your goodness. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I worship you. I worship you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The reason I live. The reason I live is to worship you, worship you, I worship you. Yes, Lord Jesus. reason I live is to worship you. At sa tuwing tayo po yung mapapagod sa buhay, sa tuwing pasuko na tayo sa buhay, pasuko na tayo na ipaglaban ang ating pananampalataya, ang ating pagmamahal sa Panginoon, ang masasabi lang po natin, Panginoon, hindi kami mapapagod. Hindi kami mapapagod na mahalin ka. Hindi mapapagod ang pusong ito. Nawitan ka at mahalin. Hindi magsasawang ikay sambahin bawat sandali papuri ko'y himigin Someone said, turn your worries into worship and watch God turn your problems into praise, your trials into triumph. This is our God. And when we worship Him, when we exalt His holy name, God is moving. Patuloy po nating luwalhatiin ang Panginoon at dakilain ang Diyos na sumasagot ng panalangin sa atin po mga buhay. Kailanman ay hindi po siya nang iwan sa bawat isa sa atin. Kaya kung sino man po ang may nararamdamang kabigatan ngayon, God wants to meet you today. Nais po kayong bigyan ng kapahingahan, ng kapayapaan ng Panginoon. All you have to do is to open your heart and start singing songs to Him. Start worshiping Him with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Just feel the presence of the Lord in this place. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sagot, dumidinig ng panalangin, bawat naing bawat higpi ay iyong naba. Just feel the presence of the Lord. Kami sa iyo ay lumalapit, kami sa iyo ay dumadaing, dinggin itong pagsamo. Tanggapin ang pag... Lahat po ng dalahin natin, dalhin po natin kay Jesus. Ikaw ang Diyos na mabuti at dapat. Ang mga pangako mo, ang mga pangako mo, O Diyos, sa amin ay sapat. At kung kami ay naninindi, at ang paligid ay kay dilim Kami ay dadala Ito po ang aming gagawin Kami ay dadain Sa Diyos na sumasagot Nang panalangin Sa lahat po na nakaranas ng presensya ng Panginoon Atin po siyang bigyan ng mataas Papakuri. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Sa ating mga pasanin sa buhay, ang sabi ng Panginoon, 1 Thessalonians 5.16 verse 18, Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Manalangin ka ng walang humpay. Give thanks in all circumstances. Maganda man yan o hindi. Give thanks to the Lord. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. I want to share with you these verses. Baunin niyo po ito. Ito po'y about prayer. Philippians 4 verse 6. Do not be anxious. Do not worry about anything. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. Mark eleven twenty four. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. When you have a prayer, sabihin mo sa Panginoon, Lord, I believe it. I receive it. It is mine. Amen po. Mark, Romans 8, 26, Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know what to pray. But the Spirit Himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. Matthew 6, verse 6, But when you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees you in secret will reward you. James 5, verse 6, Therefore confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person has great power as it is working. Matthew 26, 41. Watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And last, Colossians 4, verse 2. Continue steadfastly in prayer, being watchful in it with thanksgiving. Tayo pong lahat ay wag magsawang manalangin because God is working when we pray. Amen. Palakpakan po natin ang Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And of course, after learning all those things, ito pong last point natin, ang isa sa pinaka-importante. Learn to walk with God. You know, walking with God means partnering with God. Walking with God means working with God. Sometimes people often look in the moment. What satisfies me? What gratifies me? Without thinking of the consequences of their actions. The pleasure of the moment is never worth the consequences of disobedience. Yung konting pagsilip mo sa pornographic materials, yung konting pagsisunungaling, you know, those little sins are also sins. Amen po ba? So, what are the consequences of disobedience? 
kailangan po maging aware po tayo dito. No? Hindi po pwedeng pili lang yung mga gusto nating i-obey sa mga sa Ten Commandments, sa mga utos ng ating Panginoon. We have to be aware that if you obey, ito ang result. If you disobey, ito ang result. Amen? So what are the consequences of disobedience? That's pain, suffering, hurt, loss. At ang pinakabatindi, huwag naman po sana, wrath of God. But what are the consequences of obedience? Blessings upon blessings, favors upon favors, breakthroughs, healing, and God's very best for His children. Sino po gusto dito ang consequences ng obedience? Taas sa kamay! Amen and amen. Ako rin po, yan po ang gusto kong consequence, no? Ang uh, yan, mga blessings po na hinanda, hinahanda ng ating Panginoon sa ating mga buhay. Sino po dito ang mahalang Panginoon? Taas ang kamay! Praise God! Tayo pong lahat, mahal natin ang Panginoon. But my question to you is, what is the evidence or the proof that you love God. At alam niyo po, nasagot na po natin niyan. John 14, 15, If you love me, you will obey me. So let us assess the records of our obedience and disobedience at doon natin malalaman gaano ba natin kamahal ang ating Panginoon. God has prepared the best for us. To get the best, walk in the path of obedience and pray for the Spirit of obedience. Who wants the best things in life here? Amen. Lahat po tayo gusto natin the best ang atin pong maranasan sa atin pong mga buhay. And kami po, sa amin pong pamilya, I want to share with you, the blessing of obedience is real. Ang amin pong testimony, alam na alam na po ninyo, no? Ako po, um, I, myself, ay naging laking church din po ako. Since nine years old, I was serving the Lord. Kahit meron akong school, may mga requirements kahit busy, I was still serving the Lord. Kahit nasa Baguio ako, doon ako nag-college, nag-serve ako sa Panginoon at hindi ko pinuto lang aking ministry. And I believe the Lord saw everything, lahat ng mga sakripisyong iyon. And now, God has blessed us with tremendous blessings beyond our expectations. Ito lang aming panalangin pero God exceeded our prayers exceeded our expectations. You know what? Diba, last time po, ang sabi ko po, ang kapatid ko, nag-graduate na. Ngayon po, may trabaho na po siya. And um, mukhang pinag-aagawan uh, po siya ng, uh, <laughs> praise God, ng ibang company. Praise God for that! And alam naman po natin, mahirap pong humanap ng trabaho sa panahon ngayon, di ba? So, praise God, dahil uh, ang aking kapatid, ay, he is experiencing now the blessings of the Lord. Ang aking kuya, ang aking sister-in-law, sabi ko po, meron po silang isang branch sa may magliman ng Farmasya Guanlao. Alam niyo po, this year, nagkaroon po sila ng second branch naman sa Maimpis. Praise God. All for God's glory po. And then, um, ang aking pong tatay, meron din po siyang business, yung MCF Van Rental Services. So, ito po ay expanding na. At uh, next year, may mga pinaplano to really expand the business. So, lahat ng ito galing sa Panginoon. At ako rin po, I am 27 now. So, <laughs> praise God. I'm still single. <laughs> and, uh, um, nagpapasalamat po ako sa Lord because He had preserved my life. Amen? At, uh, natutuwa ako dahil na-enjoy ko rin po yung fruits ng akin pong labor. While I'm still single, naranasan ko mag-travel abroad. So, nakapunta po ako last year sa Vietnam. Napakaganda po ng uh, lugar pong iyon. So, yun po isa sa mga prayers po namin. Or actually, there are some prayers na nakalimutan mo na, pero pinaalala ng Lord. Nung pag nandiyan na, ah, prayer ko pala to noon. Ang Lord hindi nakakalimot. Amen? Yan ang atin pong Panginoon. And you know what? I believe that these are the results of my obedience and the obedience of our family. We will not experience these things if hindi kami sumunod sa ating Panginoon. Hindi namin pinaglaban ng aming pagmamahal at pananampalataya sa Kanya. I know there are a lot of us are experiencing heartaches, pain, and suffering. Maybe you have thought of, Lord, bakit ang unfair mo? Bakit sa amin mo pinaranas to? Pero hindi po nagkakamali ang Panginoon. 
He has a purpose kung bakit niya pinarana sa iyan. Marahil pinapalakas po niya kayo and He wants you to see His power over your life. Just trust Him. Sabi niyo po, trust. Amen. Palakpakan po natin ang Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Deuteronomy 5 verse 33, Walk in obedience to all that the Lord your God has commanded you so that you may live and prosper and prolong your days in the land that you will possess. Walk in obedience. Now, when we say walking in obedience, walking with God, I was reminded of the exhortation of Sister Baby Pachu last Friday. So, sa kaalaman po ng lahat, we have Night of Power and Leadership Equipping and all are, are invited to attend po. Yun po every Friday, 6 p.m., dito po sa atin pong banamban. If you want to grow more spiritually, mag, mag-umapoy po tayo, attend po kayo, Friday, 6 p.m. In her teaching, Learning to Walk with God, nagbigay po siya ng three points. What does it mean to walk with God? Ang sabi doon, to walk with God means to keep Him at the center of our lives in everything we do, we say, and think in our relationships, finances, plans, and every other area of life. Walking with God means surrendering our hearts to Him and walking in His ways that He directs us. And last, to walk with God means that you and God are in agreement about your life. Amen po? Galatians 5, 22 to 23. And I want you all to read this with me by faith. All right. When you walk with God, sabay niyo po ako, you embody the fruits of the Spirit. Ano po yon? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. These holy attributes mean that what you hope for is sure to come because when you walk with God, your desires and His are one and the same. So evaluate yourself. Kapag naharap po kayo sa isang sitwasyon, Ay, may self-control pa ba ako? May gentleness pa ba ako? Diba? You have to evaluate yourself. If you have the love, if you still have the joy in your heart, you assess. You assess your life. Amen? Isaiah chapter 30, verse 21, and I'm about to end. In Tagalog, sabi po doon, saan man kayo pumaling sa kaliwa o sa kanan, maririnig ninyo ang kanyang tininig na nagsasabing, ito ang daan, dito kayo lumakan. Doon po sa preaching po ni Pastor Alex, iba sabi niyo, My sheep knows my voice. Amen? Tayo po, bilang mga tupa, we know the voice of the Lord. Deuteronomy 8 verse 6 to 9, and this will be our last verse. Observe the commands of the Lord your God, walking in obedience to Him and revering Him. For the Lord your God is bringing you into good land. A land with brooks, streams, and deep springs gushing out into the valleys and hills. A land with wheat and barley, vines and fig trees, pomegranates, olive oil and honey. A land where bread will not be scarce and you will lack nothing. A land where the rocks are iron and you can dig copper out of the hills. A land of promise. A land of prosperity and abundance. Yun lamang po sinasabi doon. Amen? And all you have to do is... Observe God's commands to obey Him in all that you do. Amen? So I hope marami po tayong natutunan from our preaching today. And I would like to invite everyone to stand in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. When we think about the obedience, the ultimate example po that comes to mind is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen? He went here on earth to Save us even to die on the cross just to save you and me from eternal damnation. Because of Jesus, there is salvation, there is redemption. I believe that tayo pong lahat, we are given this privilege to, to obey God and receive all the benefits, all the rewards na nakadikit po doon. Obedience is not merely following rules or blindly conforming to authority. Rather, it is a powerful act of surrendering our will to God's divine plan. By obeying God's commands, we align ourselves with His perfect will and open ourselves up to the blessings and transformation 
that obedience brings. Nauna na pong pinamalas ng Lord ang kanyang pagmamahal sa atin. John 3.16 For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whoever believes and accepts Him shall not be perished but have an eternal life. Amen? God demonstrated His love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So, hindi question ng love ng Lord sa iyo. Hindi kailanman mababawasan ang pagmamahal ng Panginoon sa bawat sa sa atin. You can come near to God, maging sino ka man. Ano mang dalahin mo ngayon? Ano mang estado ng buhay mo ngayon? You can come near to God and His arms are open wide. Amen? Para kayo po ay yakapin. And now, let us continually uh, invite God's presence in this place. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we just want to honor you today. We just want to bless you with all of our hearts. Allow me to pray po sa inyo kahit sandali lamang. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you, God, for your presence, for your revelation. We just want to thank you, Lord God, for your very presence in our midst. Lord, sa mga natutunan po namin, we ask that you give us the courage to trust you, Lord, and your promises and your right timing. Lord, give us the willingness, Lord, to obey your word and commands, to surrender our will to yours. For we believe, God, that your plans are greater. Your plans are the best for us. Maraming maraming salamat po, Panginoon, sa inyo pong mga pagtuturo sa amin. Salamat, Panginoon, sa mga mensahe mo sa bawat anak to obey their parents, sa mga magulang na hindi huminto at hindi mapagod to discipline their children, and to all of us, God, na hindi mapagod ipaglaban ang aming pananampalataya at pagmamahal sa inyo. Maraming maraming salamat, Panginoon, as we sing this song to you, Lord God. May you be glorified. May you be lifted up in our lives. Patuloy po nating palakpakan ng ating Panginoon. Hallelujah! May I trust you, I'll obey because I love you. I'll obey, my life is in your For your presence, Lord. Wonderful Jesus. Wonderful Jesus. Pakibaba muna po natin ang ating mga kamay. Uh, thank you so much, Sister Kat. Palapakan naman po natin ang Diyos sa napakahalagang paalala sa atin ng Panginoon. A call revival, a call to absolute obedience. Or, there's so many things that we do not understand in life. Admit it. <laughs> Ngayon, pagka sinabing pagsunod, big sabihin, pwede ka namang hindi sumunod eh. Okay? So, hindi pinagpipilitan ng Diyos. He's, he's giving His commands because He loves us. If you think you're more intelligent than God, huwag ka sumunod. <laughs> But if you're fully convinced that you're limited as a person, you don't know everything, you are weak by yourself, and that God knows everything, and that He loves you, and that His plans are all good for you, then you'll be more encouraged. I choose to obey God. Not reserved, not uh, shallow, but absolutely. Palampakan po natin ng Panginoon. So, ang pagtatawid from 
your current situation to the point of a life of obedience. It's a lifelong journey. Uh, minsan, magaganda lahat ang intention po natin, pero kapag sinilip na ang buhay natin, uh, hindi siya nagmamatch, kumbaga. So why do we need to obey the Lord? Nabanggit kanina yung apat na key uh, why or how we can obey Him. But of course, we obey God because number one, it's our moral duty. Pakibanggit po natin, moral duty. Tungkulin natin yon. Hindi natin nilalang ang sarili natin. May lumalang sa atin. So, delik- delikado ang buhay ng mga una tigit sa lahat. Hindi sila kumikilala sa Diyos. Because they think they're too smart, they're too intelligent, that they can have their own way. And the Bible calls that the self-focused kind of life. It's pride. Bumabalik sa ganun ng tao eh. And we think we're the center of the universe. All attention should be upon us. We're not the center of the universe. Alam nyo, anumang ilagay po natin, makinig tayong mabuti, maging kayo po na nasa live stream and our brethren in the overflow spaces. Whatever you put at the center should be able to sustain everything about you. So, kapag inlagay mong sentro sa iyong buhay, trabaho mo, companies can hire you today, today and fire you tomorrow. Delikado ka. Pag nilagay mo ang damdamin mo sa sentro, your feelings can fluctuate. Minsan nas nakamood ka, minsan wala ka sa mood. Yan ang mangyayari na sa mundo mo. If you put a person uh, at the center that you love so much, ayun, binrake ang heart mo, huhuhu ang nilalagay mo sa post mo, sa FB mo. <laughs> Whatever you put at the center should be able to sustain everything. Only God can do that. Only God can do that. Purihin natin ang Panginoon. If you put yourself at the center of everything, you will fail. You will fail. So, it is wisdom. I don't know everything, Lord. You know everything. I trust you. I will obey you. So, yung transition na ganun, dapat nire-reinforce po natin yun sa ating mga puso. So, we obey God because it's our moral duty. But then, kukontra pa rin ang laman. So, you've got to do something. mag exert ka rin ng effort. It will not happen ng basta ka na sumusunod, kundi magpapasya ka, may effort po tayo. Kakambalan mo lang ng pananangan sa Diyos because willpower is not enough. We need God's power. Kaya ang sose na dadaanan sa iba't ibang portion of the preaching today, uh, salamat nung sinabi ng Diyos na sumunod ka sa akin, tutulungan ka pa niya. Paano mo magagawa yun? Purihin ang Diyos. So it's not just all about you proving that you can do it. That's called bravado. Pagyayabang yun. That I can really do it. That is still flesh. You know, you can obey God in the flesh or you can obey God in the spirit. Obeying God in the flesh, that will result to religiosity. So may mga tao, simba naman ng simba, pero hindi nababago ang buhay. Religion lang kasi, that's still flesh. But obeying God in the spirit is saying, Lord, I can't make it without you. So I surrender my life to you. Please help me. Give me your strength. I really want to obey you. So, sabi ng Panginoon, yung mga nagmamakataas ay binabagsak. Yung mga nagpapakababa, those who finally admit, they will not rationalize yung mga ginagawang mali, but they say, this is wrong and I need you, Lord, yun ang itataas ng Diyos. So, this is not a helpless case. This is something that once God commanded you to do something, He will also empower you to be able to do it. Ganun po kabait ang Diyos natin. So tama, mahirap pag ikaw lang. Pero kung sumusunod ka sa lakas ng kanyang kapangyarihan, madaling madali. Purihin ang Panginoon. He will empower you. So it's our moral duty. 
Wala kang magagawa kundi sumunod kung gusto mong magtagumpay because that's the law of life. Madalas kong gamitin ilustrasyon na tamang may sasakyan ka pero may batas eh. May traffic light. Oh, hindi mo pwedeng sabihin kapag nakared, eh be, gusto ko talagang sumulong eh. Batas talaga yun eh. At ang batas ay para ingatan ka, hindi para limitahan ka. Ang utos ng Diyos, they are there not just to restrict you, but to protect you. Purihin ang Panginoon. We've got to change our mindset. So, moral duty and then it should also be a, a devotion. Everybody say devotion. Ibig sabihin nun, mag-commit ka. Maging committed ka dun. Until dumating ka sa pinakamataas, it's a duty, it's a devotion, but it's also a delight. Kagalakan ko na ang sumunod sa Diyos. Hindi yung parang pilit na pilit ka sa pagsunod sa Diyos, kundi galak ko ang sumunod sa iyo, Panginoon. Look at Psalm 40 verse 8, please. Psalm 40 verse 8, very quickly. Before I release a pastoral blessing. Okay. Uh, can we look at NIV? NIV. New King James. Pare-pareho sila maganda, but okay. Yung word na delight. Everybody read with me. I delight to do your will. Hindi ka napipilitan. So you start by understanding it's my moral duty. I did not create myself. I don't know everything, but my creator knows everything. You don't even know what will happen to you tomorrow. God knows what will happen to you even in your eternity. Gusto ko lang sabihin, karapat dapat pagtiwalaan at sundin ang Diyos. Purihin ang Panginoon. So whenever there is that kind of argument na nagtatalo sa iyo, remind yourself of this. It's my moral duty, it's my devotion, it's my delight. Pakibalikan natin yung verse. Everybody, I delight to do your will, O my God, and your law is within my heart. Isinasa puso ko ang yung mga salita. The point here is, you cannot make doing God's will your delight kung wala sa puso mo ang salita ng Diyos. Kapag babad ka sa mga bagay at value systems ng mundo na masyadong depektibo. Kaya kanina yung apat, very basic, but these are actually disciplines that we've got to establish uh, sa ating mga buhay. Ano po yung apat? Balikan lang natin. Learn to trust God. Second, learn to meditate upon God's Word. So, dito mo ipapasok ang mga discipline hanggang dumating ka that to obey you is my delight. Kesa doon sa lagi kang hirap na hirap na parang may utang na loob pa ang Diyos sa iyo sa pagsunod mo. Hindi. Tayo ang may utang na loob sa Panginoon sapagkat binigyan niya tayo ng buhay, binigyan pa niya tayo ng gabay sa kanyang mga salita. Purihin ang Panginoon. Pakisabi mo sa iyo yung katabi mo. Walang utang ang Diyos sa'yo. <laughs> Nakakalimutan ng iba yan eh. Na para bagang ang Diyos pang may utang na loob. Hindi ho. We owe it all to Him. <laughs> Binigyan pa niya tayo ng guidance. Oh. And then learn to worship and pray. And then learn to walk with God. I, I tell you, it's a journey. Yung ibang nakaranas na, lalo silang na-encourage. Alam niyo kung bakit, mga kapatid? Sapagkat finally, natuklasan talaga nila, totoong-totoo, hindi sinungaling ang Diyos. Bakit? Nararanasan nila ang tremendous blessing ng Panginoon eh. Who doesn't want that? Who wants blessing? So therefore, obeying God is a delightful path to God's blessings, not a dreaded requirement. Ito'y delightful dadaan para sa pagpapala ng Diyos. Hindi ito dapat na parang kinatatakutang requirement na iniiwasan. Hindi. Daan ka sa daan ng pagsunod, naghihintay ang pagpapala sa iyo. Purihin ang Panginoon. Encourage yourself with this basic truth of God's Word. Pakibanggit sa iyong katabi ulit, hindi sinungaling si Lord. <laughs> 
Let all men be a liar, but God is true and faithful. So, the challenge is by His grace is how can we reflect His commands through our actions. Kasi iba yung talk, talk is cheap eh. Talk is cheap. Pero pag nasa actual na temptation ka na, magre-resist ka ba? O mag yield ka? Yun ang mga sukatan dyan. So, herein is the reminder that many times our actions need a lot of catching up with our claims of faith. Ang ating mga aksyon, madalas kailangang ihabol natin sa mga pag-angkin natin ng pananampalataya natin. So, yun ang magiging spiritual growth journey po natin. Look at this, Psalm 119, verse 4 to 6. Napakaganda. 119, verse 4 to 6. Everybody, you have charged us to keep your commandments carefully. So, how can you obey God's commandments if you're not even taking time to read this word? Kaya yung mga discipline dito, kung apat na oras ka sa yung computer game, bakit kinatatamaran mo ang pagbubulay ng salita ng Diyos? So, that's, the, that's now the discipline that you've got to adjust. Have some of that, pero don't forget the Word of God. Computer game will titillate your emotion, but it cannot save your soul. It cannot give you a blessed future. So, Verse 5. Oh, everybody, that my actions would consistently reflect your decrees. Minsan, pasumpong-sumpong tayo eh. Pero ang goal natin ay lumago tayo na mas malakas ng pagsunod. And then verse 6. Everybody, then I will not be ashamed when I compare my life with your commands. Finally, our actions are catching up with our claims of faith. Purihin ang Panginoon. God's word is very rich. So, further to encourage you, kasi nakakatuwa, alam ko yung iniisip ng ibang mga magulang, nawa ang lahat ng anak ko kapareho ni Sister Kat. <laughs> At yung marami na din mga NGYC. Because their parents started them up early. Tinuruan ng salita ng Diyos, magtiwala sa Diyos. They are not without problems. Of course, they've encountered, pag narinig yung patuto nila, talagang mucho hirap. Nakausap ko si Brother Marlon eh. Maluhaluha pa. Pero pastor, hindi po kami pinabayaan ni Lord. Dumating yung time, kailangan namin magpasting kasi walang makain. Pero tinaguyod nila ang kanilang pamilya. Sinampalatayanan nila ang Diyos. Purihin ang Panginoon. Now, they're being blessed. Pero hindi overnight. Kaya ulit-ulit sinasabi ni Kat kanina, wait ka lang, huwag kang mapagod sumunod sa Diyos. Huwag kang huminto sa pagsunod sa Diyos. Darating din ang ani ng kanyang pagpapala. Purihin ang Panginoon. That's His promise. Alright? So, in obedience to our God, you cannot obey God in your own terms. It's His terms because His ways are always right. They're, they're higher than our ways. But I would like to add here a very important aspect. Kasi yung iba excited. But you've got to apply something. Sociologists and psychologists discovered something sa human uh, psyche, which is, ano ang sekreto ng mga nagtatagumpay? And they discovered this. Delayed self-gratification. It's scientific. Na hindi mo lahat pagbibigyan ng gusto mo kasi sasambulat ka. Don't live just by your carnal instinct. So delay your self-gratification uh, bago ko i-reward ang sarili ko, tatapusin ko yung assignment na to. That is an application of that principle sa mga isudyante. Ah, uh, itong bagay nito magiging masaya ito, ah, pero... Iniisip ko yung konsekwensya, masama. Delayed self-gratification para ma-involve mo, ma-engage mo ang yung kapasidad mag-isip so you can involve wisdom, you can re-engage your values so mas mapoproseso mo ang yung gagawing pasya. The Bible calls it self-control. So we need focus. Everybody say focus. We need discipline. Everybody say discipline. Desire is not enough. You need to translate your desire into discipline, 
and focus. What if you fail? Pick it up again hanggang sa ang yung muscle of discipline papalakas ng papalakas sa tulong ng Diyos. Ganyan na-deliver po yung mga napatihulog sa online sabong, online sugal. Hirap na hirap na nga, magsusugal pa. So what happens? Lalong bumabon sa utang. Pero ayaw niya, pero hindi niya mapigilan ang kanyang sarili. Yung iba, bisyo na nakakasira ng baga. Marami tayong nagagawa, nagawa ng jablo para sirain ang buhay natin. Pero meron akong good news. Ang yung bisyo, hirap kang mapagtagumpayan yan, si Kristo mas makapangyarihan sa bisyo. Kaya kang palayain ni Kristo sa mga masasamang bisyo. Purihin ang Panginoon. When you surrender yourself to God, Nalungkot ako eh, dun sa nabalitang imagine sa, kaya buti na lang may Mayor Biko, no? Nawa, yung lahat ng local executive, ganun. Pinahinto ang sugal doon, lalo na yung, uh, uh, ano ba to, yung uh, online, uh, no, sa, online sugal. Kasi may nana yung, pati anak binenta. Grabing grabe na yon These are demonic bandages of the enemy. So, tandaan po natin, ang mga utos ng Diyos, hindi sila pampabigat sa buhay. Pampagaang sila sa buhay. You don't, you don't, you, you want to see the verse? Pinakita na kanina. 1 John 5.3, please. Okay, look at this verse. Armas natin ang salita ng Diyos para talunin ang kasinungalingan ng kaaway. 1 John 5.3, please. Very quickly. Everybody, loving God means keeping His commandments. And His commandments are not hindi pabigat ang mga utos ng Diyos, pampagaan sila sa buhay. Purihin ang Panginoon. <laughs> it's not perfect overnight, but you keep at it, you keep at it. My last thought is this, we keep majoring on the major, and then we minor on the minor. Alam natin lahat yun. Hindi lahat pantay-pantay ang value system po. Okay? So, yung ibang problema, yung minor, yun ang ginagawang major. Yung major, ginagawang minor. Obeying God, having a right relationship with Him, is major. Okay? The rest are all minor. Not getting your needs immediately is minor. Trusting God and obeying Him still is major. The good thing is if you focus on the major, obedience is major, pati yung minor susunod sa iyo. Purihin ng Panginoon. Delayed self-gratification, surrendering yourself to God, and always acknowledging Him. Hindi naman ako ang Diyos eh. Ikaw po ang Diyos ko. Hindi ko kaya lahat ng ito, Panginoon. I want you to be the God of my life. Help me to Obey you, oh God. Bow your heads, please. Glory be to Jesus. Kikilanlin po natin siya. There is that song, Ikaw ang Diyos. Diyos, Diyos ka ng buhay ko. Hallelujah. We're gonna sing that song as a prayer. Diyos ka sa amin. Sing it, please. Ikaw ang tunay na dakila sa mundo. It's our way of saying you are my God and I will trust you. I will obey you. Ginawa mong lahat Pag-ibig mo'y tapat at wagas Yes, Lord. O Diyos Wala nang papantay Kabutihan mo Ang galan mo'y itataas Sa buhay ko Sundin ang loob mo Sundin ang loob mo Iparindigan na is Gawin po natin pangako Sa lahat Sa lahat ng panahon Diyos ka sa alamin sa lahat na oras Nagyan pa sa akin Panginoong Isis Turihin na Dakilain ka sa buhay ko Dakilain ka sa buhay ko 
aking ama aking ama Senyor Geno Dios O Dios ikaw ang tunay na dakila sa mundo Because we trust him we worship him Ikaw ang nagmahal ng tulad ko sundin ang loob mo Iparinigan na Isis mo Sa lahat ng panahon Sa lahat ng panahon This is our vow, Lord Jesus Yes, Lord Sa lahat ng oras Na yan pa sa aking Panginoong Isis Tiwala na sa buhay ko Yes, Lord Sa lahat na bago Diyos ka sa amin Aming sandigan Aming sandigan Kaya'n masami Panginoong Isus is lifted before His presence. The Lord said something is in, in His word. Two or three are gathering in His name. He promised He'll be in the midst of them. God knows what you're struggling with. Uh, an area na parang natatalo ka lagi. But if you will really, really come to the Lord and say, Ikaw ang Diyos ko, Panginoon. Bibigyan mo ko ng lakas, sinihiling kong yung lakas para mapagtagumpayan ko ang mga kahinaang ito. Mahabagin po ang Diyos. You simply come to Him. Are you struggling with pornography? You're struggling with certain vices? Gusto ko pong sabihin na hindi natin kalaban si Jesus. Ang kalaban natin si Satanas na dumating upang magwasak ng buhay, manira ng buhay sa iba't ibang kaparaanan. But Jesus said, I have come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Itanim po natin yung sa ating isip at puso. Kakampi ko ang Panginoong Heso Kristo. But you've got to be honest in saying, this is wrong. I surrender it to you, Lord. Cleanse me and forgive me. Ayokong ipagpalit ang basura ng mundo sa ginto ng langit na yung inilalaan para sa akin. Pagod na ako sa buhay ng pagkatalo at pagbagsak. Nais ko po ang yung magandang plano sa akin. Would you follow this prayer? Sabihin natin lahat, Lord Jesus Christ, marami pong salamat. Nadaram ako po ang yung presensya. Nangungusap ka sa akin. Nadaram ako ang yung pag-ibig. Nais mo kong makalaya mula sa lahat ng kapos ng kaaway. Ako yung nilalang. Ako yung iniligtas. May magandang layunin ka po sa akin. Tulungan mo kong sumunod sa iyong naising, sa iyong mga salita. Alisin mo nga po sa aking buhay ang anumang pagdududa. I put my trust in you. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. Over my life. Over my life. Over my spirit, over my, spirit. Over my soul, over my, soul. Over my body, over my, body. Over my habits, over my, over my relationships, over my, relationships. Over my, disciplines. Over my disciplines. Be my Lord, be my, Lord. Be my, God. Be my God. Today I receive your forgiveness, I receive, I receive your, your strength, I receive, I receive revival. I receive your promise. I declare Jesus is my God. Sa lahat ng panahon, Diyos ka sa akin. Come on, lift your voices to the Lord. Say that part. Sa lahat ng panahon, let the devil hear it. Praise God. Sa lahat ng oras, na yan para sa lamin. Ah, 
I know you can sense his power, you can sense his anointing. Nakilain ka sa buhay ko Di nagbabago Yes! Hallelujah! Sa lahat sa tanging sandigan Ngayon para sa akin Panginoon Jesus Maghani ka Magliwanag ka sa buhay ko Aming Ama I want to give you a chance to express your worship Hallelujah oh, We worship you, we honor you You are our God You are our Lord Come on! Maging kayo po na nasa overflow spaces The anointing and the power and the presence of God is touching you. Oh, freedom in Christ. Freedom in Christ. Shabbat Shabbat Shalom. Balada Yasserei. Oh, we claim it. Jesus' mighty name. Thank you for deliverance. Thank you for wisdom. Sige nga po, isa pa sa lahat ng panahon. Sa lahat ng panahon. Igigit natin ito. Oh, yes, Lord. Sa lahat ng panahon. Hindi ka niya pababayaan. Sa iyong suliranin at pangkahit sa buhay. Salamat o Diyos. Nakiwala ka sa buhay. Oh, aming Ama, oh, aming Ama. We claim it, Lord. We claim it, Lord Jesus. Tingin po tayo sandali sa harapan. I just sense in my heart, there is deliverance that happened. May mga pinalaya ang Panginoon sa araw na ito. God is giving you the anointing to overcome for His glory. Give Him praise! Hallelujah! <laughs> Stretch our hands for our prayer petitions. Panginoong Diyos, kada prayer request na nasa mga prayer request na papers na nasa box na ito, lahat ng mga ito, Panginoon, ay dinudulog po namin sa iyo. And we thank you that those who are honoring you, you will honor them. We thank you for your prophetic word that your servant preached a while ago that when we turn our worries into worship, we will watch and see you turn our problems into platforms where you will demonstrate your power. Demonstrate your power on these prayer petitions. Demonstrate your power to every problems lifted to you. And we promise you, we will give you all the praise. We will give you all the glory. Salamat po sa mga patotoo ng Himala, patotoong makapangyarihan ng aming Diyos. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Lift up your hands for the final pastoral benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you and cause His face to shine upon you and be gracious to you and give you His peace. The Lord bless you indeed and keep enlarging your territory. His mighty hand to be upon you as you obey Him and protect you from all evil. The love of the Father, the grace of our dear Lord and Savior Jesus and the sweet fellowship of the precious Holy Spirit be upon us all now and forever. All will say Amen. Amen. God bless you. See you next week and to God be the glory.
Oh,